Hey everyone, it's AJ Stockwell with another QuickBooks tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna cover the issue of accidentally making or receiving an overpayment for a bill or an invoice and then getting a refund for that. So if we accidentally overpay a vendor invoice and then they issue us a refund, how do we record that? So I already went ahead and entered a bill for an insurance company. And I'll show you that here. So you can see this is a $500 bill for insurance. So I'm going to close out of it. Now, let's say that we maybe hand wrote a check outside of QuickBooks. We thought that we knew the amount correctly. We thought that it was $600. And so that's what we wrote a check for and sent that out. And now we need to go and enter that check into QuickBooks. So there are a couple of ways that that could come through. If it simply clears the bank account, then we would see that $600 check in here, and we would wanna match it with that $500 bill. And what that would effectively do is create a $100 credit, or we can manually enter it ourselves now, and then when it came through the bank feed, we would match it up then. Either way, we're recording a $600 payment for a $500 vendor invoice, and that's going to create a $100 credit. So I'm gonna to go to pay bills and write this out of the checking account. We'll keep that check number, assuming that's the one that we used. And then we need to record the payment. Now, once again, we need to actually enter the amount of the check that was sent out, which in this case is $600, I was saying. So it's a $500 balance, but we are entering a payment for $600. I'm gonna go ahead and save and close. And now let's go ahead and look at our AP aging. So from the search window, I'm gonna look up AP and then choose AP aging summary. We could also get there from the reports tab. Now what we see is that there is this $100 credit in the current section. So it looks like, and I'm using the QuickBooks test drive sample company, which anyone can go into and play around in. Um, it looks, but it looks like there was already a bill for 241. So, okay, that's, that's fine. We can disregard that for now. Um, but we see this credit, this negative balance of $100. And when we click in there, we see that this $600 payment is what's creating that $100 credit balance. Having this $100 open balance, this open credit balance in our AP aging is actually exactly what we want because we want to keep track of that. We wanna keep track of the fact that we have a $100 credit with this vendor. We wouldn't wanna just post another $100 of insurance expense at this point. Now there are two ways to handle this credit, right? It can either be applied to another invoice. So if we truly had this other invoice, we could let them know that we just want to apply that $100 to it, or we could apply it to a different future one, or we could receive a refund for it. I'm gonna show you the process of actually receiving a refund for it. So let's say that the insurance company sends us back a check of $100. When we deposit that, we want to go to New Transaction and choose Bank Deposit. And then the vendor, we wanna put that insurance company. And for the account, we actually want to put Accounts Payable. And this is because that credit created a negative $100 Accounts Payable balance with the vendor. Now, if we are receiving $100 from a vendor, then that's going to actually increase that accounts payable balance. So it's gonna bring it back up to zero in this case. It's always good to put a descriptive description or memo. So I'm gonna say refund of $100 overpayment. We could even say for you know XYZ invoice or policy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save and close. Now what we see is we now have that $0 balance. So that balance got zeroed out. However, there's an interesting little nuance here where do you see how this is the only 
item that has a zero where you know all the rest of these are clear they don't indicate zeros and the reason for that that's actually a little hint to you um, this is an extra little quickbooks trick and tip is when you see a zero dollar balance or item like this where other items are blank or just not included then that usually means that there's actually some activity in there that is netting to zero but is not fully cleared out. And what do I mean by that? I'm gonna click in here, and what we see is that we have these two transactions here. Again, they are netting to zero, but what this is actually indicating is that these transactions are open. They're not closed out. This $100 credit that was created by the payment has not been applied to this $100 deposit that increased the balance. So to clear this out, we just need to match those two up. So I'm actually going to go to New Transactions and Pay Bills again, and then I'm going to select this $100 line item. And this is actually the deposit, because that deposit created a $100 balance. You can see that QuickBooks already recognizes that we have a $100 credit with them. So it's applying that here, indicating a payment of zero. And we do see, again, zero total payment up here. We see nothing is coming out of the bank account balance. I would suggest clearing out the check number. I'm actually just gonna call it DEP for deposit, or we could call it like credit or something like that. And now we are ready to save and close. Now, when we're taken back to that open activity, because that's effectively what this AP aging report is, we no longer see that there's anything in there because there's nothing open. And when we go back to the full report, there's no zero here. This is how we record the overpayment and refund of that overpayment for a vendor bill. Now the process on the customer side is extremely similar. Let's say a customer overpays us for their invoice. So I'm gonna to have to find a customer with an open invoice. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna indicate that the customer is paying this invoice, but once again, they have overpaid by $100. So in the amount received, I wanna change that amount to the amount that they're paying. I can't increase this beyond the open balance, but I can increase the total amount received to you know whatever the customer paid. And now you can see that it's got 339 applying to it, but creating a $100 credit. And then another note down here that this transaction will create an additional credit for $100. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save and close that. And we are going to do a very similar process. I'm gonna go look at the AR aging summary. And when I do, we see that Amy's Bird Sanctuary has a $100 credit balance. A negative receivable for us effectively means that we owe this customer $100. Now this can again be remedied in two ways. Either we can apply it to a future invoice if we're gonna continue doing work for this customer, or we can issue a refund for it. Let's say that she's requested a refund. So I'm gonna to go to new transaction, and even though it's under vendors, we can actually write a transaction, we can write a check or expense to a customer. So I'm gonna choose check, and then the payee will be Amy's Bird Sanctuary. We set the check number, and then very similarly to what we did with the vendor bill, we want to set this category to accounts receivable. So this is going to actually increase this customer's AR balance by $100. So I'll put $100 and then once again, we wanna put a description in there. We can also put the customer's name here again. That might actually be a necessary step because anytime we are writing to accounts receivable or accounts payable, it requires a customer or vendor. Now we'll go ahead and save and close. And very similarly, we see this zero dollar balance, but if we click in there, we see that there are these two open 
transactions, and we need to go ahead and match them up again. So we go to new transaction and we go to receive payment again. We choose our customer and we see that QuickBooks has automatically selected both the check that we sent out, so that's seen as a receivable balance, and the unapplied payment amount. So what this is doing is this is tying those two transactions together to close them out, to recognize that this refund that we sent out was for this credit. We can see that the amount received indicates zero. And then if we're happy with this, we can go ahead and save and close. And we see that those two transactions are no longer in the detail report and she is no longer listed at all on the AR aging summary. So this has been the process of recording a vendor overpayment and refund, and then a customer overpayment and refund. If this was helpful, please hit the like button. It will help more people find my videos. And please consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so that you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching.